Friday night. Friday night. Friday night flies. Does that mean we're live? I hope so. Okay. Yeah, either that or we're just... Well, showtime. <laughs> All right, welcome back to another rendition of Friday Night Flies. I believe it is Friday. Uh, it's Friday night. Sometime in the year, January, February, March, I think we're already. Or oh, March. First day of spring was yesterday. Hey. That's right. What Ooh, is yeah. that? The equinox or what are they called? Yesterday, I believe, was the day there was for a period of 20 minutes where you can stand a raw egg on its end and it would not fall over. The equinox. Jesus. I didn't try it, but. That's they, the first time I've heard of that. That was on the internet. It sounds like some malarkey. Yeah, it does. Sounds it does. like malarkey. <laughs> Anyhow, so what are we talking tonight there, Scotty? Uh, tonight we're back again. We are doing a side. A damsel nymph, brown damsel nymph. Uh, I believe uh, Brad, our host of Friday Night Flies and uh, guru of Pemberton Fish Finder, operator of Pemberton's Spud Valley Sporting Goods. Uh, Sporting challenge... Pemberton, yeah, yeah, that's the one, right in downtown. Uh, challenged me to doing a fly with some cassette tape, as well as it had to be a damsel. So we did come up with a pretty good fly last week. Uh, and then I went home and uh, tweaked it out a little bit. Because uh, I don't obviously have all my gear here with me. So uh, I went home and played with my plethora of, of materials and came up with... Uh, the new improved, so we'll go down and show you what that looks like, and then uh, we'll tie up the first recipe for the weekend. Oh yeah, tonight we've all got uh, questions and answers. We got our live question and answer feed going. So, so got any questions? Hit us, please. If you have some yeah, questions on this gorgeous art. looking fly, <laughs> by all means, uh, any, uh, type bolts? in. And Brad is sitting. At the computer on standby, and we'll shout those questions out, and we'll see if we can't answer them. We'll try our best, Daniel. No, I am married. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is the damsel here. Some of the key features to it is the uh, the long pheasant tail on it. They do have a three pronged tail, which they uh, used to pulsate through the water with. They are a very slender body, with a bit of a uh, exoskeleton on the outside. And we got some nice legs using CDC, some bead chain eyes. That's what it looks like. I can't wait until the legs clear off here so we can get to trying this pattern. Yeah, that'd be really nice. Well, yeah. They are all off in Squamish, though, currently. Uh, I like fishing for big trout. Yeah, it's all small ones there. So we're just starting off here with a hook. It's a size 6 Daiichi. So we'll just get one of them out and get it in the vise, and we'll load it up with thread, and on our way we go. All right, so I'm using some uh, nice bright yellow thread. This helps to to uh, build the head feature of our fly, so that's why uh, we're using the yellow and not black or all over. Most of the time I don't really care what color my thread is, but this time I'm specifically using the yellow. It has a purpose. So we're going to tie right back to the hook point on the shank of the hook. Next, I'm going to tie in my ribbing. So I have some small hot yellow uh, metal ribbing here or wire. So I'm going to get that in. Give myself a little. I guess I don't need my little bobbin. I'm going to bring my shitty scissors. I did. Don't use your good scissors to cut uh, metal wire. Never a good thing. It was good if you sell them. Or sorry, don't use your good scissors. Use your shitty ones. Yeah, yeah, it's all right if you're a supplier yeah. of scissors. No, yeah, like when you use your good ones. So I'm going to tie this in. I'm going to keep that wire right on the top, so that we have a nice even profile. Just like that. I'm just put it in my little material saver. Keep it out of the way. Um, next, I have some golden pheasant tail. 
So I want probably about 10 fibers, depending on the size of your fly that you're doing. And these damsels can get quite lengthy. And they range from, what was I reading? Yeah. I got a little book that has all the different bugs in their months of the year and everything. And I think damsels go anywhere from two or 20 millimeters to 35, so two to three centimeters long. Um, this tail is going to be the uh, length of your of where you've tied in your shaft. It's going to be a long tail so that it angulates in the water a little bit. It's just coming out with all kinds of big words tonight. You're on fire, bud. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is he saying? I don't even understand what you're saying. Exoskeleton. <laughs> Angulate. All right, so I'm going to just get one wrap underneath that tail. I'll keep those tail fibers up. Um, I'm just going to wrap. I like to do this on these bugs because I want to keep the body a nice even taper. This helps so that I don't have to do it with using the thread. Might as well use the materials. There go the trim. Back to where we started, and we're going to tie in our body material next. Don't have to go all the way back. Give yourself a little area to tie in with. So I have some ostrich pearl here. This is a nice green color. And I got uh, one, two, three. This stuff's pretty scrap, or I don't even know what the word scraggly. It's not sparse is a good one. Yeah, it's not too full. So you're probably using a little bit more. Some of the ostrich is nice and full plumage. This one's kind of ratty. Um, so I got about five or six. Some of my fuller ones I'd only use <laughs> one or two. I'm going to tie it in by the tips. Wrap right back to the tail. All right. Rid of that. I already see there's been some huge improvements on this fly, Scotty. Oh, yeah? I'm going home, cleaning it up, and being the perfectionist that you are, you've definitely made some improvements this fly. Uh, I'm just getting my profile here. Okay. So I'm going to take my ostrich and give it a little twirl, get these fibers all together. It's going to help. And I'm going to use my hack pliers, which I don't normally do, but this time we are because we've got all those separate fibers. And we're just going to wrap up. And we are going to go backwards because we forgot a very important step. All right. I'm just going to put those off the side and save them. I got my side A. Uh -huh. <laughs> the whole reason why we got this thing. All right. So I got my brown tape and I'm using the uh, dark shiny side. It's going to be side A. Yep. And that's going to be uh, create the back of my fly in the head case, which means I need to go all the way back one more time. So I've trimmed it. This helps me get that tip in there. Get it nicely on top and even. Don't let it twist. All right, there we go. What do you have? You have like six years or six months. Now we can wrap in this ostrich. That'd be six years. Normally you do that first. Yeah, typically. Get that strap here we, we make so it a little bit more challenging. Yeah. And in some cases, 
It is. I believe this is the same thing that happened to me at home. Is that my sure it's just not long enough? Just not long enough, so I'm just going to tie off. I got a couple more strands reserved here. Luckily. Tie that in right back to where you trimmed off. Twist these up. Finish off the body here. Do you have just the heel tips? Yeah. Do you have some that are green? Well, yeah. Beauty. Beautiful. I'm just going to secure that. Right on. All right, so now I'm going to take my side A, fold it up and over, just hang your thread over, get it uh, centered. Just going to do a quick two wraps. Next is my metal ribbing. And now I like to do a couple of wraps together right at the tail before I start doing my segmentation up. That's a beautiful fly, man. That is a beauty. And then again, you can do a couple. If you got the small wire, you can do a couple little. I'm just trying to cover up my thread wraps with some nice gold wire here. I'm going to pull my tape back and I'm going to tie that rib off right in the front of it. Get rid of the tag. Alright, so before we do our thorax, I got some CDC here, natural color. I'm going to tie it in so you can see how this is the outside of the feather, the underbelly. So I'm going to tie it with the underbelly looking up. And I'm tying it in right where I pinched those fibers. Because we're going to be folding this over after we do a little dubbed uh, thorax. And it's going to help create the lakes. Do you usually just use a single or a double? Um, depends on the size, but um, a single is fine because I'm going to be using ice dubbing. Yeah. And it has some, uh, some good body to it. And... So I didn't need to do a double on it. If you're just using the CDC, double it up. Double it up so that it has that profile. All right. So once we have gotten to there, we're going to take a little break. I didn't bring my pliers, so I'm hoping my scissors work here. What I got is heat chain eyes. What do you need? Two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, my scissors aren't going to work. Yeah, that'll stay tonight. So, beach chain eyes are really nice for doing dentals and um, and dragonfly nymphs. Um, they're not quite as heavy. There's the barbells, and they sit really nicely. Now, the trick: the first time I've done this, I cut them the wrong way. I was holding on to the long part of the chain and kept trying to cut off the two little pieces. Gone. <laughs> Next time, gone. So when you do it, hold on to the pieces that you're cutting off. Just get your pliers in there, nip them off. So now I got myself two little beads. Yeah, that bead chain is awesome. Stuff. And when you put them on your fly, make sure that you're giving yourself enough room that you can still finish off your fly by doing a, a whip finish in front. So we're just going to uh, crisscross this. Now these bead eyes aren't as heavy as barbells, so you don't have to worry about tying them on the bottom because it's not going to make your fly invert or go upside down like barbells do. So I got them tied on, so you can already see that it's taking the uh, the shape of a damsel. And now I'm going to get my thread to the back here. 
And I'm gonna uh, dump in a thorax. So I'm using my what what uh, dub are you using? I'm using a olive UV dubbing. What's really nice about that UV stuff is that it's not solid um, olive. Same with like the black and the yellow. It has like this gassy kind of look to it. I guess that's the UV fibers that are in there. Yeah, good. Um, so it really tricks it out. Like I like that it's it has a whole array of color within the color. So I'm just gonna dub some on here. We'll build up behind the bead eyes. So remember that ostrich, when you're looking at this, as you can see from the back, the ostrich is pretty fuzzy, so we want to uh, dub out this thorax so it's bigger than your ostrich. We've got a pretty quiet audience tonight. Nobody's asking questions or anything. You can even just say hi. <laughs> just saying. It's kind of lonely here sometimes. Yeah, just the two of us. Actually, we got three tonight. There's uh, Sheridan's here, but Scotty Holmes. Where is that guy? One trick pony. He's not here yet. I don't know. He's running late. Maybe he's uh, looking for his glasses. Yeah, maybe he's looking for his glasses. You never know. All right. So we got that dubbed in behind the bead eyes. Next, we're going to be folding over the CDC, and then we're going to stroke these fibers towards the back. So that way I'm going to end up trapping a few extra ones and then just lay your thread over it. And we're still tying all this in behind the bead eyes. So we got that in there, a couple good ones. I'm going to get rid of the excess. So now you can see what we got. And what we're going to be doing is parting those to both sides so that we have a little bit of leg on both sides. And then uh, fold over the rest of the side A. So there you go. I've parted them. This here is my side A. I'm going to come over. And it's a good thing to do is to... Uh, Fold those legs backwards so you don't trap any. They so you can leave this a little bit looser if you like. I don't pull it too too tight. So you, you see, I got a little bit of play there. Creates a little bit of a shell back, and then I cinch her down. Fold it over. Do a couple wraps in the front. Maybe one more in the back. Now I can get rid of, that's one part you don't want coming loose. And this material is pretty elusive. It gets out of there pretty easily. So next we're just going to finish off this fly. I'm going to build up just a little bit behind those eyes of a head. I'm going to even this off a little. Just so that the eyes are kind of encompassed by the Thread. All right, I'm liking the way this looks, which means it's time to finish it off. So you're going to whip finish, add a little bit of head cement to those wraps. You could even uh, UV the head if you like. You know what? That UV would probably look really hot on that. Yeah, I didn't bring it with me this week, but that's all right. I'll let you guys UV yours at home, and that way you can say that it's your own. That's right. Hey, there's always room for improvement. Not much, but and a little call bit. call it the side A UV head. Um, I normally have my... Bodkin? No, uh, <laughs> just my Velcro, but that's all right. I'm yeah, this works. i got one pick for you, Bodkin. There we go. That's enough. 
So if you have your Velcro, just give it a little rub on the bottom just to get some of that UV splayed out. And that's the finished product. Man, that thing that's the, uh, the new and improved Damsel Side A. So look at the back a little bit. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, this stuff is really nice and shiny. What's going to be interesting is how it holds up in the water. I think it will get... I think after a couple of fish, it will get right, chewed up pretty comes. good. Well, we'll see. I'd like to put that thing to a good day of testing. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, you can see as it like kind of collapses down on itself, it has some really nice texture to it. And oh, it's, it's kind of like molten, like a molten feather. It's kind of like why we use these things a lot of the time for a lot of the shell backs. It has that same characteristic, but with some nice flash, it's going to reflect the sun. It's a pretty easy tie. It's not uh, too, too complicated once you get doing them. I have done a couple at home and start banging them off pretty quick. Anyhow, we'll walk top here. We'll sign out. Uh, we've got a good show coming for you, coming to you tonight. Yep, definitely. Um, um, I know I got uh, two more flies that I got down. So I got another nymph coming, which is a great all purpose nymph. Uh, and they can do with a whole whack of colors. It's really cool. And then I'm doing a yellow dune because I went out on the Birkin. If you were watching um, Permanent Fish Finder. Brad did an update last week. Did Took you some, sneak out there and not? I go? went out there the day before or the oh, day so after. Oh, sneakier. Yeah, I went by myself. How did you? Did you get anything? No, no, I didn't Nothing get anything. Yet. I went around that area of the lookout. Yeah. And I don't think the cutthroat would have come all the way up it's there. It's still a bit early for cutthroat. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's probably about a week or two. Two. I'd say two weeks away. Yeah. And the water was um, starting to come up a little oh, bit. It's, it's still really clear. Cold but it's starting to green up a little. Um, yeah, it was a very quiet day. If I went the day before, there was a little bit of sun, so the water would have heated up a little bit. I think if people are looking for fish right now, the, the lower level it's just going to be where it's at right now. Yeah. Right. Cutties are just coming through there now. Uh, you Typically, the little bit system gets cutthroat before the burn head does. Yeah. So even the upper little bit would probably be a good bet. So. Yeah. Anyhow, we'll sign out at that. We've got a good show coming to you tonight, so stay tuned. We'll be out for maybe a couple minutes here and right back and at we'll you. We'll be back again with another fly. So this is Boulder saying wet nets and uh, join us shortly. That's right. If you missed any episodes from last week, join us on FridayNightFlies.com. That's right. Wet nets.